These days, it's hard to go to a concert or a show where people don't quickly pull out their smartphones to capture the moment or let their friends know that they're there. But some artists and performers have had enough of that. Jeffrey Brown tells us about a startup that's catering to that sentiment and its ambitions for dialing back our phone use in a much bigger way. A recent concert at the famed Fillmore Auditorium in San Francisco, filled with music Gonna see me in a new and laughs. <laughs> but note something missing. No smartphones held high capturing the proceedings. That's just the way comedian Dave Chappelle wants it. But I see how it distracts people. Or like I used to make requests to the audience, could you not use your phone during the show? And they, they can't honor the request. They can't. Oftentimes they yeah. cannot. Grown, responsible, disciplined adults have a hard time watching a comedy show without the distraction of their phone. We all need to break just from that technology, just for a minute. Chappelle is part of a growing movement of comedians and musicians pushing back against the ubiquity of the smartphone in the concert hall and in our lives. The phone is an addictive device. I don't know if you've ever lost your phone, like just the anxiety you feel. It's, like, it's almost like worse than losing a pack of cigarettes or something else that's addictive. Here in high-tech central with Silicon Valley nearby, companies large and small vie to produce and monetize the latest gadgets. But one local startup called Yonder is after something different, prying them away, at least for a few hours. 31-year-old Graham Dagoni is its founder. It's just going, hey, here's a phone-free show, here's a, here's a classroom, here's you know, an event or a wedding, you step into the space, while you're there, what happens there stays there. It's socially acceptable to unplug. Your nervous system can relax from kind of the call and response pattern of modern life. Is it on silent or vibrating? It's deceptively simple. At large events, a yonder team passes through the line, takes your phone and puts it in a locked pouch, which you get to hold on to. At the end of the night, your pouch is unlocked. If you really need to use your phone, there are spaces available, a bit like smoking areas at the airport. Out. <laughs> Dave Chappelle likes the idea so much, he's become an investor in Yonder, which charges a fee to the performers or venues, not the phone users. Some 400 artists and musicians have used Yonder so far, but for Dagoni, Yonder is as much a cause as it is a business. And I think people are looking for new ways to kind of to live and things that can center their lives. I see us as just part of that. Creating a real functional, practical sense, just creating, helping people create device-free spaces. In the age of social media, people are experiencing art in new ways. Exhibitions like the recent blockbuster by Japanese artist Yayoi Kusama come Instagram ready. Wired Magazine editor Ariel Pardis has written about art and technology. So it's not just the show that the artist put on for you, but it's actually you taking that, capturing it, remixing it, posting it on your Instagram account, and turning that into your own version of yeah. art. So the, the art that's on the wall or the music up on stage no longer lives by itself. Exactly, and I think artists are a little bit squeamish about that. Uh, understandably so. A lot goes into creating art. In today's music world, social media cuts both ways. In part, it's a marketing device. At most of his concerts, guitarist and singer John Mayer allows smartphones, which help get the word out about his music. If that's how you want to enjoy the show, I get it, because I also have a phone in the dressing room, and I'll go do something at night and take a, a picture with it. I mean, in your career, though, you've watched that yeah. Take off. Right? I'm not, I mean, that, rev that technology and sure, evolution. Sure, but it's helped me. I mean, it's I can also promote things from bed. But when performing with Dave Chappelle, as on this night, Mayer abides by other rules and likes those too. It's become unconscious thinking now that when you sing something on stage in front of people and you have a bad note, you go, well, that's going to make the tape. I'm working something out. Dave is working something out. Yeah. Sometimes that has to be cumulative. Yeah. I learned last night, OK, I messed up the chorus in my own song that I just wrote. I don't have to suffer the indignity of knowing that that lives in repetition in 50,000 views. 
people in line at the Fillmore seemed happy enough to play along. It's cool to like, if you want to do something and you don't want everyone watching every single imperfection of a new performance, it's cool. You paid like a significant amount of money to go see the performer, so you should see the performer. I'm not that guy that's taking pictures of the, of the act. I'm going to experience that and just let it be right here. People don't have that self-control, so I'm all for it. Lock it away. Lock it up. And Yonder is now being used in other places, at weddings, for example, including Serena Williams's, and in courtrooms and more than a thousand schools, like West Potomac Academy in Northern Virginia, where teacher Nancy Mantelli is happy to have her students' full attention. In my opinion, cell phone use is a mental health issue because I feel that the students are addicted to it. They simply can't put the phone down. So here I am as an educator, and I'm trying to give them this neutral environment, a safe environment to teach them. And that cell phone puts them right back into that, that place where they're potentially being bullied, where they're getting harassed. All this raises new questions, of course. Does locking up a phone limit free speech? Who gets to decide what's a phone-free zone, especially in a world where cameras can help monitor and expose bad behavior? Yonder founder, Graham Dugoni. What is the interplay between privacy and transparency in modern society? And the answer is, in a way, it's complicated. I think that's part of a healthy, ongoing dialogue in a, in a well-functioning society is to understand that there are choices but if you think, if anyone thinks that endless transparency is going to lead to more freedom, I think that's naive because it, it leads to, it's a prison of its own. And technology itself changes, like these recently released sunglasses that capture video, potentially outstripping efforts like Yonder. I, I see it as a bit of a cat and mouse game. Yonder is sort of fixing the problem of the iPhone, but what about what comes next? Mm -hmm. For now, though, Dave Chappelle thinks it's keeping the focus where it belongs. It's also about the quality of the performance. And we always have this feeling of being lucky, like we're in us. Like us in this room, we're the only ones who get to see this or feel this. Or You're not thinking about outside the room or anything, and it, and it is kind of wonderful, man. Something to think about for those on and off the stage. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in San Francisco.